the center. What we celebrate here this morning, that Jesus has been raised from the dead, is at the very center of our lives, the very center of the teaching of the church, that what gathers us here today, like the apostle in the scriptures today, that we believe that Jesus is raised from the dead. And that belief gathers us together today, but also informs and shapes our daily lives. That the central mystery of our faith, that God's love is stronger than death, that God has raised Jesus, his son, from the dead, continually directs our thoughts and our actions. And we come here to celebrate once again that Jesus is raised from the dead. And we pray that what has happened to Jesus will one day also happen to us, that we will enjoy the resurrection of the dead and life everlasting. This creedal statement that we profess every time we gather as a community of believers here at Sunday Mass, the center of our lives. One of the things that I would like us to consider as we gather here this morning is what difference does it make that Jesus and his resurrection and the belief in that is part and parcel of our lives as Christians. The people around the world gather together today to celebrate this great mystery of our faith, this experience of the early church and the followers of Jesus that we will continually hear about in this time of Easter as we read from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, that they experience Jesus risen from the dead. Today, what is recounted for us is that those apostles first experienced the empty tomb but in the hours and days and weeks that came after Jesus' resurrection, they experienced him raised from the dead. And that first proclamation that Jesus is risen became the centerpiece of the early church and the teaching of the apostles. And it also needs to be part of what we teach by our lives and through our words, that there is hope in the world because our Father in heaven has sent Jesus, his Son, to be our Lord and our Savior, the center of our lives. A few weeks ago, I was watching television and saw a commercial about atheism. It was the first time that I've ever seen a commercial asking people to donate to the cause of atheism. It was really very interesting to me, this um, person who was really kind of somber, I suspect because he doesn't have the hope and joy that comes from having faith in Jesus, was encouraging the viewers to consider making a donation so that the church and state in our country would remain separate. Now, we know that our founding fathers in the Constitution wanted no one, a government especially, to dictate um, that how we were to worship. One of the things that um, certainly those early pilgrims came to the United States because they were being forced by the king to worship in a certain way and to join a religion and our founding fathers did not want that to be true, but that is not the same. It is not the same as encouraging us to have faith, knowing that there is a God who directs us and leads us, knowing and believing that God wants to reconcile humanity back from that original sin that our first ancestors experienced that Adam and Eve fell and our loss of innocence 
was um, founded. But God does not want us to be separate from him. God does not want us to be alone or afraid. So he sent Jesus, born in time for our salvation, and he said, listen to him. He is the word spoken by God in heaven. And what has happened to Jesus, we pray one day will happen to us. So how does our belief direct our lives as Catholic Christians? At the beginning of the time of Lent, we were given um, these bands that we were asked to wear around our wrists, and it says, let your light shine. At the beginning of the Easter Vigil, we gather around a fire that is to remind us of the ancient fires of our ancestors that gathered people together where stories were told, and we bless that fire. And then we light the Paschal candle from that fire and bring it into the church. We follow it. And then we ourselves light our own candles that are to remind us of our own baptism. When we put on Christ the first time, the center of our lives, and in a moment, I'm going to ask all of us to renew our baptismal promises. And we have had 40 whole days to consider the effects of sin and how we are to reject sin and turn to the Lord once again, who is our life and our salvation. And we know sometimes it's difficult. Following in the footsteps of Jesus means that we need to serve and to surrender and sacrifice, that where Jesus has gone, including the cross, we need to follow, and it is the path to life everlasting, the resurrection of the dead. After we renew our baptismal promises, we will be sprinkled with the waters that were blessed anew in our baptismal font. And it is to be like holy rain falling down from heaven. I invite you to extend your hands and catch some of the holy water and to bless yourselves with that water of new birth because we need to be encouraged each and every year to trust that Jesus is our life and our salvation that Jesus is raised from the dead, and he is the center of our lives. May this celebration not just be a commemoration of something that happened to Jesus many, many years ago, but what is happening to us right here and right now, that as we gather together on this Easter Sunday morning, we are being touched anew by Jesus, who is raised from the dead.